graph c is a function of x equals this equation and it tells us that eventually we have to describe the end behavior of c is a function of x as x approaches positive infinity and describe the end behavior of c is a function of x as x approaches negative infinity so what we're going to do is first of all just put this in the calculators because whenever we see c is a function of x this is another way of saying y. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. So we got y equals, I'm just gonna type it so you can see how I put this in the calculator. So it's y equals negative nine parentheses three. And then you're gonna raise it to the power, so you press caret x minus four, and then you press the right arrow to get out, and then plus two. Then when you press graph, you're gonna see what it looks like. It's a curve. And then you're gonna press second graph for the table. So what we're going to do is plot points that I can fit on the graph. And so I see two is one, three is negative one, four is negative seven. So let me go ahead and copy that down. So we have x, y. So based on what I saw on my table, I had two was one. 3 was negative 1, 4 was negative 7. So 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. And remember, it was a curve. So I'm going to make it curved. Now, the question says, describe the end behavior of C as a function of X as S approaches infinity. So as X approaches infinity, what happens to the Y is that it's going down. So that means as X approaches positive infinity, C of X approaches negative infinity because it's going down. Now, likewise, when we look at the other side, it says, what happens to C as a function of X as X approaches negative infinity? So as X approaches negative infinity, it's constantly approaching two. And so as X approaches negative infinity, C of X approaches two.